Trisha Paytas is in trouble with her new skincare line already, but she's not in Jaclyn Hill bubbly lipstick drama trouble just yet. So y'all can relax. Hello and welcome back to Drama Investigator. In today's respill, we're going to be covering Shane Dawson's new documentary he's currently working on, Gabby Hanna getting exposed by Jesse Smiles in a leaked phone call, and Trisha's new skincare line is already starting to get backlash. So let's dive right in. For the past eight months, apparently, Trisha has been working with someone who has helped her acne by doing facials and chemical peels, etc. And she's also created a branded product, slash done a joint business venture with them. And together, they've created skin skincare products. So now Trisha claims to want to share these products to help other people's skin. Apparently her skincare line is for all types of skin, which is rather questionable in itself because there's so many different types of skin. Like for example, how can a product that targets oily skin help someone with their dry skin? Saucy saucy. So let's talk about Trisha's product launch video that she recently posted to a YouTube channel. Infomercial alert 101. OMG, talk about cheesy cheesy. Although 50% of her fan base are happy for her, the other 50% have a lot of questions. People have been calling this a cash grab due to how pricey it is. Also, it's been noted that Trisha has lots of money, she's probably spent big bucks on chemical peels and had multiple treatments done, so could her skin really be improved by just these products alone? Or all the hundreds if not thousands spent on professional skincare procedures? Also, we have to address the most blatantly obvious blurring filter on her face during her product launch video. Damn, who knew you could photoshop a video so so well these days. I'm low-key kind of impressed, but it's also incredibly sus. The website looks very clean, I must admit, kind of giving Too Faced vibes. The packaging is immaculate as well, so I'll give her a virtual high five for that. The description reads, Introducing Trisha Paytas Miracle Alexa Collection. Trisha Paytas has teamed up with Skinky Guru, aka The Skin God, Charlotte Wilson, and Glow Skin Enhancement to bring you the perfect skincare regime for makeup lovers. With the Miracle Alexa Collection, you no longer have to use your makeup as a cover-up for pimples and unsightly blemishes, but as an enhancer for your natural beauty. Your clean, smooth and clear skin will be the perfect foundation for any look you want to achieve. People are also angry at her pricing, but at the end of the day you do get what you pay for, and when it comes to skincare this pricing is pretty normal I'd say, considering it includes a day and night exfoliator cleanser, morning face nutrients, morning toner, tinted day cream with SPF 30, renew night eye cream, activating glow night serum, and night cream. So yeah, I definitely say it's worth the price for all that. Not gonna lie, it low-key sounds like a steal, but will it live up to the hype? That's another question that's yet to be answered. So far, people have started sharing their opinions on Twitter after Trisha tweeted the following. OMG, thank you so much. Ah, I'm so excited for people to actually use this line. I've been using it for almost eight months and like it seriously changed my skin. My makeup artist referred me to the creator of the product for facials and we made this together. Someone replied, not that long ago, you had terrible acne less than eight months ago so if you're using this it doesn't do all this miracle stuff also you've gotten chemical peels and facials i'm sorry to say it and i love you but this feels very much like a shane-esque cash grab the chemical peel was done by the company she's collabing with after the majority of her acne had healed though queen of i never use filters except when it comes to false advertising i would have been more excited about this if it weren't for the filter over the whole commercial and the fact that we therefore cannot see if there are concrete results from said products someone had also also said, why is it $200 for seven sample sizes? Trisha responded, they're not sample sizes, they're full products. I've been using mine for six months. It's formulated and produced here in LA by one amazing woman on the spot when it's ordered. Didn't you say you were using it for almost eight months? Just save your money and get a chemical peel like Trisha did a few months ago if you want the real results. So what are your thoughts on all this drama? Let me know in the comments. Shane Dawson is allegedly planning a return to YouTube with a brand new documentary series covering the Free Britney movement. This, however, has not been confirmed by Shane or his team. However, major fans of Britney have said that he's allegedly currently interviewing people about Free Britney. Back in 2019, Shane had actually shared interest in the Free Britney movement by tweeting this. This Free Britney stuff is really intense. Just catching up now. Wow. Some fans of Britney are hoping this brings more exposure to the movement. Others have said that his enormous cancellation will probably hurt the movement by giving it less credibility, strictly because it's coming from him. People are also saying that this is an easy way for Shane to come back to YouTube after getting cancelled because he's using a popular movement to try and get famous again by essentially piggybacking off it. If Shane is seriously considering using the Free Britney movement to get uncancelled,
cancelled, he's got another thing coming, as this appears to be very disingenuous and it's a disgusting way to come back to YouTube. So, what are your thoughts on Shane's alleged new documentary series? Let me know in the comments. Gabby Hanna got exposed recently by Jessie Smiles because Gabby is apparently using Jessie's trauma in order to defend herself constantly. So Jessie leaked a phone call on Twitter of a conversation she'd had with Gabby that is utterly disgusting. You FaceTimed me right after our first because I genuinely do not know how people knew about it. I and why'd you pick up to him? I didn't have the number saved. That's the first situation was a FaceTime call. The second situation was when we were at an event and you tried to take a selfie with me, and I was like, no, it's not happening. And then the event that I'm assuming you have to be talking about is when I was at um, 1600 Vine, and then he came there, I think I was at Lele, and then he showed up, and I was like, oh, no. He tried to talk to me there and pull me aside yes. there. Yes! Yeah, but that's not, that's a completely different situation. That's not, that's literally months and months later. You were at a place with, with his friends, he showed up and pulled you to the side. I said that. You hung out with Curtis's friend. Curtis was there, pulled you to the side. I said and that. said that as the way that it all went down. I also didn't hang out with like his friends. You I admitted to it. You and Curtis. I think I was at Lele. We all lived in the same building. Yes, and he showed up and pulled you to the and side. Guess what? I am allowed to have friends. I'm allowed to collaborate. Like, I can't cut everybody out of my life. I didn't even know you spoke to him all these times. I'm finding out now, and honestly, I'm frankly disgusted. So I didn't even know all of this. I didn't know you took a- talking about you're disgusted. I literally just told you about this. Don't tell me what am I talking about. I just had a- Don't tell me that, because I just had a panic attack hearing you say that you heard him out. He said, do you mind if I tell you the story of that night? And I said, I mean, yeah, that's fine. Like, I've heard her side. You can tell me yours. So he told me the exact same story. Like, I didn't even know that he told you the story of the night I was. I never knew that. Yeah, so he told me the story, and then I told right. him. Why would you listen to him? Why would you listen to him? Like, really? Because why would you? He like even. I was getting ready to defend you. Like, but for like, what? Just don't. Just know. say no, sir. Thanks. Like you. Like even though she's not my friend, I don't want to hear how you think you, know, you did her. Who cares? Like just hang up. Him. Jesse, I wanted to f for you too. Don't, days. like, literally f him. I agree. Yeah, I agree. But, like, when he said that, I literally wanted to catch him in his lie. For what? He told me his story, and I told him, well, Curtis, that is literally the story that Jesse tells. And at the end of the day, she was asleep. Like, that is what I said. And then he was um, like, excuse me, I, I need to call you back. I'm sorry. I'll call you back. Okay. <laughs> You're making it sound like I'm friends with him. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, from the start. I'm just saying, how could I get her? Like, you, it isn't news. It like, is news. Jesse, that's literally always been what I've said. I, I've always said, he asked me to tell, it was literally in my notes on Facebook. Like, he asked me to tell you the story. Like, I wanted to catch him in a lie, Jesse. Like, I was ready to tell him off and be like, that's not true. And then when he told me the same story, I said, yeah. So you're telling me the same story, which is she was asleep, and you That's what I said. And then he said, okay, well, now you at least know it from my side. I said, okay, I'm never going to publicly bash you, or defend you. I'm never going to publicly uh, bash Jesse. And yeah, said, right. <laughs> they tried to black me, by the way, afterwards. Um, he tried to black for me. He did. Why did you lie about never speaking about me that day on, on TMZ article? Why did you lie about defending Curtis? I I never ditched my friend uh, or publicly defended my best friend. This was the day the story broke. I hadn't seen the article yet. Whatever he tweeted, I genuinely have no idea what his tweet was. I responded with a current Vine meme, which was a Big Sean Lil Wayne song. Beware, beware, beware of a woman with a broken heart. I don't remember what he said. Obviously, it had nothing to do with the case. So that was that day before I ever saw it. The tweet is deleted because I was like, oh shit. I didn't understand the context of anything about this. One of my friends, like a guy friend, was falsely accused. And um, it's... 
to life and all of a sudden it came out that you it was false and I hated that so when it came out like I said that thing that thing about whatever the thousands I don't remember I have no idea what it actually said but it's clear that I said something along those lines first of all so all the ones that I saw because I never went back and deleted anything so all the ones that I saw never showed that they said get popcorn or why can't be talking about fire and then I saw the one that you're referring to which said somebody responded the actual tweet's not there so I don't know what it says but somebody says oh my god oh thousands of women da, 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 da. Yeah. and then I was like oh shit I remember this I tweeted this and deleted it like a minute later because at that point if you don't remember we had no idea who each other were I barely had a Vine account I had a few thousand followers on there right. I was literally a fan watching Vine gotcha. I said something stupid that I felt bad about so we needed it immediately and now years later we're talking about it when you and I like the fact that that's been coming up now and that you use that as an argument when we became friends eight months after that I put it up I regret it as a fan of Vine and a follower who was commenting on the lives of two people she never I'm, met wait I'm sorry you can't just, it, just it, like I'm, hey I like you please I put it up I regret it as a fan of Vine and a follower who was commenting on the lives of I'm, wait, I'm sorry, you can't... Just like, it, just it, like I'm, hey, I like you too, please. So just like I'm saying on my life, my situation, our situation, that was what I did. I put some tweets up that I obviously don't agree with in 2020. Mm -hmm. It was six years ago, Correct. and I didn't remember them until I saw them again. I was like, okay, yeah. But my whole point of this is, why is this coming up in 2020 when we became friends eight months after those tweets were even out? Gabby, the answer to your question is you. Do you realize that in your video that is not factual? Like when you said, oh, I had no idea the context. Like you do understand that obviously that's not true. No, I don't. Okay, Jesse. Yeah. You do understand and I know that you know this. Mm -hmm. When that story dropped, every single person was saying that you lied. The Are you kidding me? Is that your justification? Because I, Jesse, I'm telling you everyone's apologized to me for it, first of all, and it doesn't and make I it better. And, so and you're so taking it I back by trying to pretend it never happened. Like if you want people to stop calling you a apologist, you have to address the tweets. Jesse, and I will, but I also okay, have to it. talk about the history of our relationship, and that's what I plan on doing. Is saying how is that relevant to you being a apologist? This was the Jesse, first. How is anything you did in your video relevant? You did a DM, and I basically did a table reading of it. I want a public statement of apology saying I should have never done this. It was inappropriate to share private conversations publicly. That is the way that I will stop talking about this and literally drop it. I want something that says I should, I'm sorry that I hurt this person. I should not have done this. I shouldn't have shared private messages. And straight up, like my lawyers will not let me drop this without an NDA because like I'm going to live the rest of my life wondering when's the next time Jesse's going to be like, you know, she did do this. I want to expose her again. And like, that's where I'm at. I genuinely just want it to be for real over. Let's keep this offline and just, and we'll see where, what happens in court. And then we don't have to bring our followers through this. We don't have to bring our fans through this. And we get to the bottom of what's been, you know, hurting you just, and then we won't have to bring our fans into this. That, I'm more interested in bringing my fans into it because those are the ones who are affected. But they, I don't want your money, Jesse. I, I do I, not want your money. I'm not saying. I don't want it. I'm literally saying, like, I think your fans are affected too because yeah, this is. I mean, like, I see your live streams and I was worried. I'm, should be. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. No, that's why we shouldn't. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to. I still have to clear my name, so I have to like keep doing this. Yeah, I don't want it. You are narcissistic, and you have been for six years, Jesse Smiles. I'm keep, I have to keep that in. So you're telling me you're gonna go on live stream, you're gonna tell all your followers everything about all our past. I don't see an end game in that for you. And that's why I was saying just to- Jesse, that's stress for me too. I know like, that. I keep going and sitting with these litigators, thinking about the idea of people saying how terrible I am for somebody with a child. What I want, if I want to for people to hear my side. I have no desire to take food out of your kid's mouth. I know that like your kid is like speech classes. Like that's expensive. You're a mother. You're a family. I don't want to hurt you. I mean, the only thing I want is for my name to be cleared 
for me to feel like my story is heard and for this to go away obviously people are going to keep asking me about it and like if it's not going to happen then I need to like continue doing what I'm doing mm -hmm. and I also want you to work on a public statement and then we can work on it together I want a public apology that that should never have been made public that's not going to happen so I, I understand okay so then we keep going I'm not doing anything with you like I'm not like this is not you okay, say we keep going keep going then So I think that it's only fair that you can also extend that same courtesy to me, considering what I've been through. This isn't me trying to like hurt you or you in any way. Like this is not do this or this is gonna happen. Like I mean, I guess it kind of is, <laughs> but it's just like I'm not doing it to hurt you. So what are your thoughts on Gabby now that you've heard the leaked phone call? Let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments.